Well, David, it looks like it's 545 to me. Shall we dive right in? We can. What do we got? 12, 12 good folks coming in here. All right. Yeah. Well, why don't we get started here if I can get my cursor rolled over the right screen. Um, excellent. So welcome, everyone, to the ProQuest ETD Administrator Users Group uh, session here today. My name is David Jenkins. I'm a product owner on the dissertations and thesis team. My, my co-host co here is Austin McLean, the Senior Director of Academic Relations. In fact, I've got a slide that'll talk about that a little bit more. This is our team, just as a reminder for, for people that need a scorecard to, to, to play along with us. Um, as you can see, you know, there's been a lot of growth in this team reflecting the, the investment ProQuest is making in our dissertations and thesis business. Um, you know, Julia uh, joined last year, Jess joined last year, April joined um, a little, shortly before that, myself. We've also added another product owner to the team, uh, Christian Jackson, that you may be interacting with. You do some work with uh, PQDT and, and other aspects of the, of the business. But uh, these are these are the faces that go along with uh, the folks that are, are, are doing dissertation thesis business for, for ProQuest. So today, I'm um, just going to talk about some roadmap themes for what we have going on here in the tail end of 2021 and going into 22 and 23. And this is uh, really dovetails into what, what uh, April and I showed last year, um, breaking things out into what we're doing in three buckets. One is what we're doing for administrator workflow enhancements. Two, uh, what we're doing for student workflow enhancements. And then third, which is where we spent the majority of our time, and I'll, I'll reiterate that again here in a moment, what we're doing with um, application modernization. So it's you know, we've been doing some work to, to uh, transition to some new technologies and it's going to pay some dividends for us that we'll, we'll touch on here quickly before we um, open things up for the floor to everybody to ask questions and go into Q&A. Um, so to the point that I made just a second ago, um, we have been in the midst of a, a, a very long uh, technology refresh, going back and re replacing old components, rewriting services, and simplifying that, the, our co the code base because it's, you know, it's been, been out there for a, a very long time. And as we all know that, you know, when code's out there, eventually you can take some steps to improve the responsiveness and and um, uh, and, and make it so it's a stable platform that you can uh, uh, build and implement future enhancements on in, in, a, in a much more uh, responsive and, and quick fashion. So um, rewind, rewinding back over time, we did the author work for our releases uh, throughout Q, uh, uh, 2020. And then we started on the admin workflow um, in 2021, and we, we, refer, we released the first half of that um, in July of 2021. And here in a second, we'll, we'll talk about it. So um, that first July release that, or the July release that happened this year, bought the real, really the first visible changes to the application that, uh, that have been part of this technology refresh. To that point, we were rolling things in uh, one for one uh, functionality replacement, old, uh, new for old. And uh, with July, we actually made some changes that that were um, that made a difference in the UI. We were doing things that reflected our new um, uh, uh, you know, our new designs uh, for make us look and feel like our other products. Uh, we made some changes in the ETB list page, and um, uh, and to reports and a couple of other things that uh, many of you have noticed. And we've re received some positive feedback on, so we do we do appreciate that. Um, so that you know that put us about 50% way through that process of uh, modernization and, and also there's some accessibility improvements that we're making uh, the, the drag and drop functionality would be a good example of that for what we what we did that makes it so uh, someone uses using assistive technologies can can better use that functionality to move fields uh, uh, in or out of a report as an example um, uh, in, in an accessible fashion which it wasn't such before we, we made that that change and that's one of the reasons we decided to make that so um, you know where are we kind of in the next month and change here, uh, we will finish up that uh, remaining admin workflow uh, activity. Um, we're on track for right at the end of October. And I said we're going to release it in Q4. We actually had some meetings. And I think what we're going to end up doing just to not disrupt your lives and stay away from um, your know, releases near the holidays is we're, we're, it's, it's looking like we may uh, just have that just after the holiday um, so as not to disrupt anybody's lives. We're going to put it through plenty of QA paces and make sure. Um, you know, we put out the quality product that we expect. We, we always have, always expect to um, as soon as possible. Um, and again, that, that, that release is going to um, probably more resemble the earlier author workflow 
uh, updates where it's a one-to-one -one replacement of function functionality with some minor uh, UI adjustments. And we're putting in our, our modern uh, designs for things like buttons and shapes and colors and fonts. So um, we're not going to move the cheese very much, I guess is what I'm trying to say with that. So um, you know, be on the lookout for that maybe when you, when you return from the, the holidays. So with this two-year um, uh, transition or technology migration behind us, we finally get to, to, to in, in earnest go and look at what uh, people have been bringing to our attention through the ideas portal, um, through discussions and in, in, you know, in our customer touch points, um, things that have come up in support tickets about you know, what, what are we going to do next to improve uh, ETD administrator. So in the, in the short time that we have um, you know, in, in November, into December, taking into account holidays and, and um, uh, vacations and such, we're going to have the team working on a couple of things. One of them is we've heard that there's some institutions that would like a, uh, the ability to drive the ProQuest uh, delayed release or the embargo, uh, drive that directly from your institutional repository embargo. So that is something that the team is, uh, we've got our stories queued up. We're, we're uh, actually put together some conceptual designs and we'll start work on that um, maybe at the end of October, probably certainly in November. Um, on, the, uh, on the administrator efficiency front, uh, I've heard loud and clear through our, through our you know, discussions, you know, probably in sessions like this last year and in the voting on the ideas portal, um, that being able to save and apply um, report settings um, is, a, is a big deal for administrators. You come in on a, on a routine basis, you run the same reports, and it's, um, you know, it's the same thing. So uh, we are looking at being able to uh, allow you to um, save a report setting, come in and apply that and run the, run the report to improve your efficiency. You don't have to go and select those fields and drag them in and out. So I think that's going to be something that's going to resonate well with the community. And that's my, that's my prediction. I'll leave it to you to, to give us that feedback when, uh, when we get that designed and delivered. Um, and then finally, uh, for those of you, and it's, I'm guessing it's the majority of you, uh, you know, you start your work from looking at the, uh, the ETD list. Um, if you go and do some work, you click on uh, a link to go look at that submission. Um, it opens up, or excuse me, it, 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 it redirects the browser to display that ETD. And when you hit the return to the list page, um, the, qu the query parameters are not there. And so we're, uh, and that was a, a, a function of the, some limitations of our, our new technology stack. Um, we're in the process of fixing that, and that will be rolled out um, you know, sometime in, in early, um, in early uh, Q1 of next year. Um, you know, during the downtime, so it doesn't uh, doesn't affect uh, you you and your peak usage time. So beyond that, uh, and this is where where we're looking to the to the community, you know, in the forum today, um, in our ideas portal that I'll show again here in a second, and in some discovery communities that that are discovery community I'm setting up to help us uh, uh, understand you know what people's priorities are from different institutions. Um, and kind of compile what's the what's the, the pulse of everyone for what we need to focus on next. So you know, in that 2022 2023 time frame, again we show those three buckets: the the red, uh, the administrator workflow enhancements, the green student workflow enhancements, and and third the web application modernization, um, which are typically more um, internally focused, but 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 important in, uh, for, for you as well. So uh, I'm not going to try to read through the entire list, but these are things that are shown, uh, primarily shown in the, the ideas portal. Um, we'd like for you to, to go there. We'll look at the, the ideas portal a, a second in, in static form in, a, um, in one of the slides here. But go, go in and, uh, and, and, and look at those, those items, vote for them, and you know, that's going to help us to prioritize uh, what it is that we're going to go Going to go work on next. So you know, there's some things that are very heavily voted on. I'll just call it, call out a couple here. Um, in the the first group, administrator workflow, uh, we're we're doing some work to make um, uh, the email templates for so for if, you know for a revision email or an, an approval email. We're we're creating a a, a self service uh, configurable section that the school can do without having to ask for um, uh, help from uh, ProQuest support in order to do that. So giving you your own section to be able to, to customize that text in there. 
without uh, without interaction with us. So I think you're going to find that to be a uh, something that's been asked for and will be beneficial to you. Um, you know, we, there's there's been a lot of votes for auto delivering batches of BTVs, and, and actually, with the discovery community, I'm going to talk about here in a little bit. We want to further kind of dig into that to find out the use cases and what kind of parameters people want to use, so we can design something that's flexible to meet uh, the majority of uh, everybody's uses. Um, and and uh, that's probably enough out of that section. But you can see there's there's a theme of um, self service, putting uh, putting uh, Putting the hands uh, in your hands, our trusted partners, the ability to go in and do some configuration of aspects of your site so that uh, so that you can change things on the fly without having to go through uh, ProQuest support. Um, student workflow, you know, you, you, the administrators are our primary are our primary users. We do, do get things occasionally that uh, affect the student workflow. Um, you know, one of the ones is email notification of revision uh, revisions being submitted. Apparently, there's a um, a pain point where students submit their revisions and they're wanting notification and apparently they've been uh, reaching out to their administrators to confirm that things have gone in. So it's just a way that we can, in an automated fashion, uh, provide some some sense of uh, uh, satisfaction to them that they know that it's been uh, uh, received and they don't have to worry about um, you know following up and making sure they're falling behind. I do want to note uh, down here in this section. This is more of an internal ProQuest thing, but uh, we'll we'll have uh, you'll you'll see it and we'll talk about it. Is we're going to transition to a single sign-on uh, security implementation. It will still be based on um, an email and a, and a password, but we're going to utilize the same single sign-on functionality that you would use to sign uh, sign into other ProQuest products. So, um, and, and on top of that, probably most importantly is Password resets will be self-service. So if somebody you know forgets or changes and, and loses track of things, they will be able to recover that themselves in just a matter of minutes rather than having to, to get some intervention from the ProQuest side. And I think that that's something that uh, um, is going to be going to be beneficial from you know, for those times when those things happen. Uh, I've been promising this slide is coming, and here it is. Uh, so. At um, our uh, ProQuest ID exchange, it is at ideas.proquest.com. Uh, if you go to to uh, to that URL and go into the ET administrator um, forum by clicking on uh, the this this icon or these words here, it'll take you in and will show you all the items that have been submitted by you or your peers. You can add your comments to those. You can you can upvote them. There's actually no downvoting, so it's all just voting, I guess. Um, and so this is the data that we use to take a data-driven approach to what we want to prioritize based on, on market need. And obviously, we, we, there are some other factors in there. It's not just all a popularity contest. But, you know, we want to deliver what is, is going to bring value to, to you and, and your partners. So please make sure you're going into the ideas portal and, um, and voting for those things so that we can, uh, we can uh, you know, do what makes, has the most impact for you. Um, all right, this is what I'm going to get excited about because I ran a discovery community uh, for the dissertations dashboard uh, or uh, ETD dashboard, and we'll, we'll look at a slide here in a second on that. So very excited about this. I mean, now that we're at the point where we're, we're through this two-year technology uh, transition, and we're starting to, to, to work on new things, um, you know, we're going to have new designs, we're going to have new concepts, we're going to have, um, you know, ideas that we want to go test. So. Um, I'm going to be standing up a, a discovery community uh, to provide feedback and help us set product direction. So again, reviewing concepts and mockups. Um, when we get things to a point where we have a, a lower fidelity or a higher fidelity, you know, actual piece of code that you can test, you know, making those things available to, to work on and getting together both online and offline uh, with me and your peers to, to discuss uh, use cases and and invalidate those use cases to make sure that again what we're doing is going to meet the needs uh, of, of of all all of our partners. So this is something um, you know we would ex I would expect based on my experience with um, the dashboard is that you know we're going to be meeting you know monthly or so and I've I've been doing some fun things around uh, office hours while I'll just be around for an hour or two and people can pop in and pop out and ask questions so it's not necessarily you know, an all skate for everybody that, that would be there. Um, but, you know, about, about an hour a month for, for meetings. 
And then, you know, as we come up with mock-ups mock and concepts, you know, we'll, we'll forward those to the group and just ask you to look at them and provide some feedback. And I use the word assignment. That's probably too structured of a word. Um, but, um, you know, it just have you put a little time into that. Give us some feedback about what your thoughts are on the usability of it, things that you'd like to see. And, of course, in this uh, forum that we'll have set up, you know, we're looking also to have to be a little bit of, um, you know, organic interaction between our partners because I think that's where, um, you know, we see people sharing kind of best practices or how do they, how do they use things or it generates other ideas. So, you know, the takeaway here is that if you're interested in participating, uh, you know, reach out to me. Uh, my address, email address is there, david.jenkins at proquest.com. Um, you know, we're, we're, we're not looking, we're not looking for 50. We're probably looking for in the neighborhood of, you know, eight to 10, maybe a little bit more, uh, schools to participate. And, and again, just kind of give us a, a, a wide array of, um, uh, insights and perspectives on, on, on these new ideas, concepts, and designs that will help us shape our roadmap moving forward. Uh, communication. I wanted to kind of highlight this. Um, based on some things that happened out of that July release where we, we sent out some notifications based on uh, people who were identified as primary administrators for a school and, and quickly became apparent that some other people were, were looking for information that we, we shared in those, those, uh, those emails. Um, so, so two things to think about. Number one, we are in a much more active fashion utilizing the what's new section um, at the top in the, in the, the header on, on ETD administrator. So you will see, you know, there's whether it's we're, we're going to roll out a bug release or release notes or anything along those lines, pay attention to that. And, and, uh, and, and that's a way that we're going to roll out some, some messaging. Um, and then uh, the second one uh, in one of those emails that, that April sent out um, about a month ago or so, um, she was uh, kind of testing that notion that there's people outside of just the, the primary administrators that like to be involved in email communication. She set up a, um, a URL that, that's here. I won't attempt to read it right now. And if you're interested in um, uh, you know, pretty direct communications, and it's not going to be minor stuff that will come to you, but things that are kind of time critical or essential, um, we'll be able to, to, to reach out to you. So, so please go to that. That URL, or if uh, if you prefer, you can reach out to me, and I'll make sure that you get get on that list. And it's going to be a little bit of an experiment to see how we're going to use it, but you know, we want to be able to have information um, to to be able to get a hold of folks. Uh, before we get to the Q and A, I think I'm reserving enough time here. Just want to put in the, the the plug for ETD dashboard. So for for those of you that are um, that are depositing into uh, PQDT. Thank you. And so ETU dashboard is the analytics tool that gives you insights into how uh, your dissertations and theses are being uh, accessed globally. We can tell how many have been, uh, you can see them here, but I probably won't try to go into it, but give you information on that so you can get insights to be able to manage your programs, manage your collections. Um, and if you, uh, if you are using it, I'm actually interested in hearing how you're utilizing that information in some new and, and innovative ways that maybe uh, maybe I'd like to hear about. And uh, if you don't have access to the dashboard, reach out to me and we'll make sure that we get to get you and anybody else that you'd like to have access to um, set up in there. Um, then the last one, uh, we just another heads up, and I know a lot of people have IRs already, but just talking about our partnership with the X Levers component of ProQuest, um, you know, we are working very closely to be able to, uh, with the delivery component of ETD Administrator, not only deliver it to PQDT, um, we're also supporting um, exporting to, uh, to a supporter based uh, institutional repositories as well. So that was a lot of fast talking, uh, but I did want to leave a lot of time here. We got about 20 minutes left, it looks like. Um, I would like to open it up to the floor for, for folks with any questions. I need to switch over here to the Q&A tab, I think, and see if there's anything there. And um, see, uh, see if anybody has anything to say or any questions for us. Any questions at all? Anything about the product? Anything about any emerging trends that might have something to do with uh, with the submission process? Anything just with 
dissertations and theses in general. I've got Austin here. Austin knows everything. I'll just tell him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, Larry, you're usually a good one for a question. Can we call on you if you're still in the session to give us uh, some some feedback or suggestions? Um, I'm about out of suggestions today. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Fair enough. Anyway, it sounds very interesting. I like a lot of the things that you're doing. And yeah. I think it's an improvement. Um, uh, the email is a good addition. The way you're working with the email, I think that'll that'll be an improvement. The, the um, customization, giving you control of your, your own text. Is that the, what you were referring yes. to, Larry? Yeah. Yeah, that's been heavily voted. I think it's going to be going to be welcome for people to be able to, to put in their own text in a more more uh, real time and self-service manner. Yes. And being able to uh, manipulate the uh, graduation dates, I think that's important because those graduation dates right now are kind of, they kind of float around. Uh, more and more students don't attempt to wait for an official walk in the graduation. They just want to get out of the institution and do their thing. Mm -hmm. And so whenever they graduate is whenever they graduate. Right. They finish, they finish, you know, so we need to be able to manipulate that a little bit. Sounds like a, like a trend really as much as anything else. Is it, is that something else that other folks at other institutions are saying? Um, I'm not sure. I would think they probably are. Oh, um, sorry. I wasn't asking you Larry. I was opening it up to drawing in some other folks. I'm sorry. I was drawing in some other folks. See if anybody else has, has noticed that as kind of a, a oh. trend of the walk when you're ready kind of a scenario. Right. Yeah. So folks can feel free to unmute themselves if they'd like or type in chat. And we're happy to read out both of those and have you participate. Larry, that's great. Thank you for kicking off the discussion. We really appreciate it. Sure. Maybe in the meantime, what I'll do is I'll pull up the uh, idea exchange. And uh, we can well, Roxanne, take that. Roxanne submitted something here. I noticed oh, that okay. idea. Sorry, Austin. I noticed the change in the Jolly update that now the date submitted in the ETV list is based on the last date the student submitted, not the initial date. Can you explain why this change this was made? I think this was um, uh, was was noted, Roxanne. Certainly, we have not uh, changed anything in the metadata or lost the original submission date. Um, I believe that that is something we're going to roll out in a, a, a bug fix here. So good catch on that. That's that is something that has happened and we'll 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 get that to be um, displayed properly in in the list page. So um, stay tuned for that. But that should roll up here very soon. I believe that's in our next our next bug release. Great. And yeah, John Hagan asked if, uh, if he could propose the discussion that we had. Uh, with the USETDA group where we talked a little bit about uh, the ProQuest Clarivate uh, acquisition and absolutely you can do that. Yeah, we, there was a lot of good information and feedback shared there. So that's absolutely fine. But I think what I'll do now is to show the idea exchange and uh, have people be able to take a look at what, what we are um, getting up to in terms of kind of next steps for those ideas. So. Here we go. Here's the idea exchange. Are you able to see that, folks? Anybody? Yeah, I can see it, Austin. Awesome. Okay. So the key area is if you're if you're a frequent user here, you can see the hot ideas or the top ideas, uh, and that'll show all the the ones with the most votes, and then the new ideas. So when you come back to the idea exchange, you can always go and look at what's new, probably since you last joined. But I think what what David was talking about is us acting upon your feedback. And so your feedback really trends to this focus of the top ideas. You know, what are the things that are being voted on the most for changes to ETD administrator? So David talked about a number of these things. I, th I think that's that's uh, kind of meaningful that we are taking this into consideration with that prioritization that David talked about earlier. So the customization of revision emails, the automated delivery of scheduled ETDs, um, those are two that David talked about. We haven't talked about the checklist option, David. Maybe uh, you could talk a little bit about that. 
I mean, I, basically what it is, and it seems a little bit counterintuitive because we put checklists in place to make sure everybody goes through and um, verifies that everything that is required is in place. And so what has been asked for, and I can't remember if it's, you know, it's, it could be, it could be nine institutions voting one time or one institution voting nine times. I can't recall. Uh, you will, and you won't be able to see it from a non-admin panel. Um, but, but they're, they're wanting to be able to just click and check them all off. So it's a little bit counterintuitive versus, you know, the use case for, for how this was originally put in place. So this is one of the items in this discovery community that I want to, I want to dig into and understand, you know, why that is. Cause you know, the checklist is there as a safety net to make sure nothing, something isn't moved along that doesn't have everything in place. And the, in, in my mind, at least the product manager is, well, if you just can click it and close everything out without having to, you know, verify each one individually, then the opportunity to miss something goes up. So that's one of the ones that we're we're collecting some data on, and we'll talk about in a in a discovery community. Okay, great. And you can see the others, uh, folks in the on the uh, webinar. Uh, make tags visible to the whole team. Send confirmation email when student submits revisions. Yep. Talk about that one. Yeah. So and it's planned. So you could kind of see the real time, you know, when something goes from under review to planned as this one is, uh, you'll know that it's uh, coming up in the queue for uh, the work by our development team. Yeah, and there's an ability also to um, to sign up for notifications. If you vote for it, um, you can opt in to us giving you updates or receiving updates when something moves, moves through um, the life cycle uh, to, through to the point where um, you know, we, we, we go and update here and say that it will be in an upcoming launch or excuse me, an upcoming release. Great. And so the hot idea is if we take a look at that page for a minute, you can see that the change name prompt to name as appears on title page has quite a few uh, new votes and allow admins to opt out of receiving emails when students submits revisions has a couple of votes as well. So those are, those are probably the newer, the newer ideas coming okay. to the exchange. Yep. But good. So uh, we won't be offended if right now you go over to uh, ideas.proquest.com and go right in and start voting for ETD admin um, it, while you while you remember to do it. We're happy to have you do that now, or you could do it at a, a later time. The the key is to do make your voice heard and let us know what uh, what are most important to you and to your university. So I'll stop sharing that, which I think I did. You did. Great. <laughs> so other other feedback or uh, questions that anybody has, it can it, you know the session is about ETD administrator, but we're happy to take questions about ProQuest dissertations and thesis global or PQDT global um, or anything else related to dissertations. We'd be happy to answer your questions. Compliant end of the day crowd. That's right. That's right. It's been a long and interesting day. And, and you know, obviously, David and I are, are here uh, after the, the conference. And we'll, I'll be at the conference tomorrow. So you can uh, chat with us if there's something that you remember after the session. You thought, oh, that's what I was going to ask about. But we, we really appreciate your use of ETD Administrator and your contribution to the ProQuest database that then feeds your IR. Um, we have over 800 users to ETD Administrator and more coming in every month. So we really appreciate your support and we're happy to have this be uh, a living and, and growing resource. Thanks to David shepherding things through with the development team. All right, well, if there's nothing else, I'll, I'll stick around, but uh, appreciate your time today. Uh, you have my email to reach out if you have any questions about uh, dashboard or or ETD administrator and uh, would would uh, love to hear from you and and hopefully we'll uh, some of you be interested in being in our uh, discovery community. So thanks for your time today. Thank you.
Hi, I just wanted to say that I'm really looking forward to the uh, plan changes to the ETD administrator. I think it's going to make things a lot simpler for all of us. Is there something specific that you you, you noticed, Valerie? Uh, yes, um, notifying the students that their uh, revision was submitted successfully. Is that uh, something you hear of quite a bit? Am I okay? Am I okay? Mm -hmm. My e box, my my email box is so full all the time. I come in, I have like thirty emails asking if they've gotten their if I've gotten their revision. So, all right, we will a huge difference. Good. I I, I think that's going to be. I, I'm not sure everybody gets quite the volume you do, but it's certainly been um, a pain point that has been upvoted and and discussed in in, in chats like this one. So. Glad we're glad we're prioritizing the right stuff, and uh, hopefully we'll make your life a little a uh, little easier. Yeah, Valerie, that's great feedback. How how were things going with you during the pandemic? Were you able to do your work remotely, or what what happened there? Oh yeah, no problem. It was so simple. I've actually enjoyed working at home. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's good. Are you are you still at home or are you in your office now? No, I'm back in the office, but um, only four days a week. I have one day at home. Okay. Which is nice. Let you focus and get more things accomplished, maybe? I am so more productive at home. <laughs> huh. Interesting. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah, it's been, it's been really simple. That's good. Simple as good. Well, great. Well, maybe you'll consider joining the, the development community that David is talking about. You're a, a power user, a longtime user. So we'd welcome to have you if it's something you're able to do and fit into your uh, work schedule. Oh, sure. Yeah. Actually, I'd be very interested. Okay, great. Great. Yeah, it's not, it's not a big time commitment. It gives you, you know, some some early um, insights into to where we're headed and what some of our designs might look like and um, you know, different levels of fidelity. Some of them might be, uh, you know, a, a, a mock-up that you can look at. There might be some things that have some level of, you know, programming behind it that you can, you can interact with and, um, you know, understand that, give us some feedback and make sure we're, uh, we're headed in the right direction. Yeah, I think it's, I, I think it's great that you're involving the community. It's very well, much it's, it's, it's good to be finally working on things that we, we, you know, we need a lot of community involvement in the, while the, the, the two-year technology refresh, you know, was spent yeah. a lot of time on that. It was an investment we needed to make because it's it's making, it's, it's so much easier to, to develop new features. It's so much easier to improve our, our test development and test coverage because things run faster. You know, you should be seeing uh, from an administrator perspective, way better response times on, you know, pages that used to take quite a long time to load, like the list page. So, um, right. Right. It's, a, it's, a, it's, it's an investment that we needed to make, and uh, I think we're, we're all going to see dividends paid from, from that time. Actually, I do have one question now that I think about it. Um, when you um, load the assigned to administrator page, mm -hmm. you get the graph on the right-hand side. Yep. Is there a way to um, hide that? You should be able to collapse them both. You can? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, is it just is it just visually distracting for you or um actually I think it takes a page a little longer to load. Interesting. Okay. That's at least what I my perception. Okay. We'll look we'll look into that. Maybe there's something we can do to, to optimize to make it load faster. Um and I'll see if there's something that we can do to make the default so it would come up with them collapse potentially. So that's good. Otherwise, it's really helpful information. Good, good. Yeah, we, uh, we, we, we made some informed decisions on the restructuring of that, that um, the, the, the old version of the graph and the data to the new one. The old one was just, it just didn't make a lot of sense to a lot of people. And we just wanted to streamline it and make it very obvious who has what. And you can, you know, if you need to, who has a little bit of extra slack right now, or who has the most slack? I guess nobody has a lot. Um, uh, to be able to give them, to be able to assign it. So I'm glad that's working out for you, and we'll see if we can do something to uh, tighten that up a little bit for you. Great, thank you very much. 
Right. Great. Well, thanks, Valerie. We really appreciate it. I think we're off to the next uh, event.